Welcome to my channel. My name is Ree. And if you haven't met Nia already, <laughs> this is Nia. But I thought I'd just come on here just to explain my labour and delivery story and also my postpartum experience because I had a bit of a rough postpartum experience. If you've clicked on the video, you can see the title so you'll know. But I'll explain briefly like what happened maybe how you can prevent it because I don't know, maybe some things that I did wrong that I shouldn't have done or maybe it was never my mistake and it was always going to happen, but who knows how it happened. So I'll explain. I had quite a long labour. I was basically in labour from Friday night till Sunday morning. So I started getting the irregular contractions. They felt like period pains to me but other people say they don't, so like, it's clearly different for like everybody. Everyone gets different experiences with their labour. Mine were irregular. I'd done the whole thing where I went into hospital. They said I was too early, I was only one centimetre dilated, and I was like, oh my god, I'm having contractions. And when I say irregular, they started off 20 minutes apart to an hour apart, like on and off. Then they went to about five minutes apart, and that's when I went into hospital, I went into the maternity triage. They turned me away, they said, you're too early, you're not in active labour yet. They gave me a sweep, and if you don't know what a sweep is, it's basically where, a little bit of detail here, I'm really sorry, but they stick their fingers up <laughs> your JJ, and basically sweep the baby's head and it's supposed to open up the cervix and induce labour. Well let me tell you it worked because I got home, I had a bath which was the worst bath of my life, just wasn't enjoyable <laughs> and I was having contractions literally they went to like three minutes apart. Because I'd been previously turned away by the hospital I was like I don't want to ring back up and say I'm in active labour please can I come in because I felt like they were just going to turn us away again we lived a half hour drive from the hospital but anyway my partner Laval he rung up and he said I was three minutes apart they're pretty regular but bear in mind they weren't always dead on three minutes so when I was timing them sometimes they were three and a half sometimes they were two but average it was three mine were never regular even when I was in the hospital they were never like bang on so just bear that in mind when you're timing your contractions but anyway they went, yeah, yeah, come in, went in, they measured me down below and I was four centimetres dilated. So I'd gone from one centimetre to three centimetres, probably in about three hours. Went in and they said I was active labour, so they got me a delivery suite, which was low risk one, which was great. It had a pool, it had this really kind of weird bed. It wasn't like a normal bed, it was kind of like a beanie bag bed, but it was really comfortable. It was really nice, it had fairy lights, everything. So it was what I wanted. My partner, about he put on some music so we didn't prepare any playlist or anything like that and we literally just put on Ibiza chill mix it was relaxing but not too sleepy had this a little beat spit but it was nice it was enjoyable and to be fair my contractions were they were painful don't get me wrong but they were bearable I was using the gas and air which made me feel a little bit dizzy and sick I can't lie I was in the pool probably lasted about an hour and obviously when you're in the bath you kind of prune up don't you so I was like oh, I'm gonna have to get out the pool must have worked because once I got out that's when the contractions got really intense they were so painful I just couldn't bear it and I asked the midwife can I just have anything stronger and I generally was going to go into labour I was like I'm just going to have the gas in there and that's it well my experience was completely different to what I expected it to be but there we go I must be a wimp it's funny because I have quite painful periods and my partner Lars mum was like oh you'll be fine because you're used to your, your painful periods you're going to wing it you're going to be really good and used to the pain well no, it's a different sort of pain. It's very similar, but it's more intense. So she gave me an injection in my leg, dimorphine. I spewed everywhere. And then she gave me anti-sickness injection as well. I think it was cyclosine. Yeah, and then I fell asleep. So <laughs> it must have worked. So then on Sunday morning, it was early hours. I woke up from the dimorphine, it was about 1 a.m. And the pain was obviously coming back. And she gave me two options. She was like, we can have another injection of dimorphine, which I was a bit against because I'd spewed everywhere. So it made me feel a bit like I don't want to have it again. 
and she was like, you can try an epidural. I was like, give me the epidural. Just give me the epidural. I just don't want to be in this much pain. So she was like, right, we're gonna have to move you out of the low risk delivery suites though. You'll have to have a catheter put in and we'll have to monitor you more intensely. You'll have to have fluids as well. I think I was so dazed at this point. I had hardly any sleep. So we went into the other room and she gave me the epidural. And when they give you the epidural, they actually tell you to tell them whether you're having your contraction in that moment because apparently you can get long term back problems if they put the epidural into your back when you're having a contraction which I didn't actually know this at the time all they said to me was just let us know if you're having a contraction but you're so dazed at that point you could forget but anyway got it in which was cannula into the back which I could press a button as well if I wanted like a top up they were checking me every four hours how dilated I was and I think at this point I had got six centimeters maybe it was like seven it was coming towards like near the end but still slowly going through I think at one point they were checking my temperature and my temp had gone up so they were worried of infection so they gave me some paracetamol just to bring the temp down and it went back to normal my poor partner Laval was just sat on this horrible chair bless him to be honest I did feel for him it wasn't even a comfortable chair to sit on that for like nearly 24 hours is pretty rubbish so anyway yeah time is going on I think I had like another nap which was great the epidural for me did just numb all the pain but I could still feel my contractions it felt like a massive pressure down below that's how I can explain it kind of like a pressure where you go to the toilet anyway I had a nap at 10 a.m they measured me and I was 10 centimeters which was great baby's heart rate was looking all good and she says right I'm gonna give it two hours so you're fully fully dilated 10 centimeters and we are gonna start pushing so 12 o'clock came and she was like right we're gonna push so we started pushing obviously you push when you're having the contraction and which was good I could still kind of feel when I was having a contraction because I knew when to push and she basically said just push like you're having the hardest poo of your life so that's what I was doing and she did say most people they squeeze in their throat and I didn't realize how much this was actually a thing and I really felt like I was just concentrating so much on not squeezing with my throat and it was really hard and all my concentration was just going on pushing and just getting her out and I just didn't even realize like what was going on and my partner Laval had to tell me the story like what actually happened because I just can't even really remember it I was so in my zone of just pushing anyway she said I was doing quite well and basically her heart rate was dropping between the contractions so she was like we might need to get assistance to come in so I'm carrying on pushing and she had to pull the emergency buzzer other midwives came in doctors came in I remember I had my eyes closed and I could just hear loads of new voices and the sound of the apron roll like rolling over and over again how many people are coming in here right now anyway so I opened my eyes and I saw but I can't tell you you really just don't care in that moment you just want your baby to be safe you to be safe and just to hold your baby at the end you just want it to be over at that point and you just don't care about all those people I didn't anyway maybe it was the drugs as well but I just didn't care anyway I was pushing and pushing I had all these people telling me to push and then the doctor said no you need to cut you need to cut now because her heart rate just was dropping too low more than they liked so that's when they gave me the episiotomy cut down below they injected with local anesthetic which I probably didn't even need anyway I couldn't feel a thing <laughs> because of the epidural but she injected me with the local anesthetic and then she started cutting with the surgical scissors assuming surgical scissors and I didn't hear this but Laval told me after apparently she was like oh these scissors are really blunt oh I think I would have died if I'd heard her say that but anyway they basically cut through your skin cut through muscle and I think a lot of people have it to prevent tearing but in my situation it was to prevent you know anything to happen to her because her heart rate was dropping too low and she basically flopped out she was in my arms not long after that everything's a blur it's all magical and crying Laval's crying really really beautiful and I think that's when she says I'm gonna stitch you up now so she stitches me back up everything's good and also I didn't mention that they actually had to break my waters in birth I think I was literally nearly seven centimeters dilated and like my waters still haven't broken so they broke them um, so I think that's probably when it sped up the labor I had to basically go to a postnatal ward after that they had to twop me which is trial without a catheter so they had to take the catheter out I had to wee a certain amount of urine that was all fine I was like hoping like I could be discharged that night I, you know she was in our arms at 1 p.m plenty of time to get everything done obviously things take time in hospitals 
<laughs> but yeah I just think it's like the last thing you want to do is to stay a night in a postnatal ward the midwife they were all lovely but you're so sleep deprived you're emotional and you have to stay overnight first time looking after your baby on your own without your partner I bet some women absolutely boss it and they're amazing but I was just an emotional wreck I was crying when Laval had to leave I was like I just did not want him to go basically I wasn't allowed to be discharged yet because I think they had to do the checks with the baby and they didn't have a midwife on the day shift who could do the checks so I had to wait till the night shift team came on so one of those midwives could do her baby checks before we could be discharged anyway so I stayed the night I was breastfeeding I didn't really know what I was doing I'd watched a few videos beforehand but no one prepares you for the real thing you're still having to figure it out completely when you're so tired as well so yeah I was up the whole night didn't get any sleep I was in a bay of four women so there's three other women in there with their babies they were all sound so quiet slept the whole night Nia was crying all night I don't think I was burping her enough but just because I was just new at it like I didn't know what I was really doing there was a clock above my bed and I was just looking at it waiting until Lavelle could come back in at 9am counting down the hours the midwives came in a few times like are you okay they couldn't even settle her Anyway, we did it, didn't we? And she had her checks in the early hours of that morning as well. So we could be discharged and we went home and all was good. It was all magical, magical week. Our mums came, everything was really nice. So it had been about one week since giving birth. I was breastfeeding her, plus pumping on the side, doing really, really well. Latching on really good and also taking the bottle. It was all just going so good. Oh, big burp. <laughs> and I woke up shivering and feeling really cold. And bear in mind, this was mid-June, so it was hot. And my mum was like, oh, I hope you're not ill. Why don't you just go and have a lie down? And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. So I went downstairs to the bedroom and had to lie down. I just couldn't sleep. And I just started shaking so, like, like, oh, I couldn't just stop. And I'm a nurse, and I know that's like rigoring. But I was like, surely not. Surely it's not rigoring. I'm just a little bit ill, I don't know. Checked my temperature, and it was 38.2, I think. It was in the 38s. Obviously high. I text my partner, I was like, please come down. I don't think I'm well. He came down, I was like, what's wrong? I am not well, like I can't stop shaking. My temperature's high. He checked my like, blood pressure and everything. That was all fine. Heart rate was really, really high, obviously because of the high temperature. But I was also taking regular paracetamol as well because of the pain down below still. So that obviously lowers your temperature. So if I was taking regular paracetamol and it was that high, like that's a bit dangerous. I hope I don't have an infection. So they say you shouldn't wipe with tissue roll down below because of the risk of infection, the risk of tearing it or disturbing it down there. So I had read online previously and also if you've watched my what's in your hospital bag video you'll see that I you put in there I use the perineal bottle which is basically a squidgy bottle that you put water in after you've gone to the toilet or while you're peeing you can squirt it down below to be soothe the pain or and clean yourself kind of like a bee day I was doing that but I never wiped with tissue roll down below so I put like a pad back on and that kind of would absorb what was there yeah but maybe like I should have made sure it was dry. Obviously bacteria grows really quickly in wet, moist places. And that's obviously going to happen there. But maybe I was being a bit too, too clean. I, I really don't know. I had ring 111, so got through to a doctor. I explained my symptoms and they were like, it could be your episiotomy cut that's got infected. Obviously it's in a place that does get infected very, very easily, it's down there. They had to admit me back to the postnatal ward, which I was discharged from a week prior after delivery. So I went back there, did my temperature. It was 39.4, which had gone up even higher. And I didn't really have the great experience. I know when you go into hospital with sepsis, they're supposed to give you antibiotics within an hour, fluids within an hour, and they didn't basically. They weren't even going to give me paracetamol to take my temperature down. They were like, oh there's a doctor not on the ward yet, I'll have to wait for him to come. And I was there like shaking. Honestly, I felt so horrific. I've not felt like that in my life. I just felt like I was going to throw up because I just felt awful. It was kind of painful down below as well still. I was sweating buckets everywhere I was lying was getting damp but then also I had little baby girl needing breastfeeding so I 
I'm breastfeeding and I'm sweating on her and I was worried what if they give me antibiotics and I can't breastfeed and all of this it was just awful they eventually um, gave me paracetamol to bring down my temperature and a doctor saw me I think it was three hours later and they were saying that we're struggling with your antibiotic choice because I'm allergic to penicillin and you're also breastfeeding so there's a lot of antibiotics you can't have so they decided to give me gentamicin which they didn't stock so they had to like get hold of it from pharmacies and they gave it to me six hours later after I got admitted which is a bit rubbish I can't lie they were like you're gonna have to stay in for a regular course of IV antibiotics to treat this infection they inspected me down below they thought that it was the episiotomy basically that had got infected it was painful they were giving me regular pain relief I was in, in hospital for a week and it was quite like traumatic as well because I was obviously breastfeeding Nia wanting her to stay with me they let Nia stay with me they would have been horrible if they didn't but I was so ill that first night I literally could not have looked after anyone I couldn't even look after myself I was sweating everywhere I was shaking it was really horrible having sepsis I can't describe to you but with the episiotomy it was definitely that where my infection was from so I do just push forward to other mums who have bought the perineal bottles. I was also using the Freedom Mum cooling pads and spritz blitz, spritz blitz, spritz blitz, spritz my blitz, whatever, the, the expert midwife spray that you can buy. I was spraying that as well and I got this infection. Every time I went to the toilet, I was doing that whole thing. So I was spraying with a perineal bottle of water. I was spraying then with the spray <laughs> and then I was putting a cooling pad on top of a normal like menstrual pad and it must have just all been too much going on. I don't know, but I got an infection. I could have got an infection if I wasn't doing any of that. Who knows the reason why? But I just want to make other mums to be, if you are using these things, really be aware that if you're leaving it moist down there or you're being overly clean in a way, it is still dangerous and you still can catch an infection. Just be careful. If you're not sure on something that you're using, then speak to like your midwife about it or anybody that could give you some advice. But like I said, it could have been the procedure when they did it that gave me the infection like you just don't know like what caused it I asked the doctor in hospital do you think it's because of what I was using like the perineal bottle and everything and he said no he said you don't know and you can't blame something because you don't know why it happened it's a place where infections grew very very easily I don't need to explain that to you you know why it's a place that can get infected very easily so you just got to be careful I felt good in that first week after I gave birth I was leaning on the floor I was heavy lifting like like you shouldn't. I was doing all these things. I was constantly cleaning because I wanted the house to be fresh because we had our mums around. I was doing all of these things and I was probably being a bit too full on and my episiotomy did open a little bit. You could see inside the stitches. Just be careful after you give birth. Listen to your doctor and your midwife. Don't take it too far with your mobility. Walking half hour walks because you want to use your pram. You've got plenty of time to use your pram. Just take it easy. What I didn't like about breastfeeding was that you constantly sat down. My sister said a good point and she said well maybe that's nature's way of making you chill you need to relax and you need to let your body recover and thinking back probably was maybe if I hadn't have got too far with my mobility and heavy lifting it wouldn't have opened and it wouldn't have been easy for it to get infected While I was in the hospital, I felt like I was so ill, I was so dehydrated from sweating all the time and from the sepsis, my milk supply just went really, really down. I was pumping every two hours. Also, when I had Nia, I was breastfeeding every two hours. So I was really trying hard to keep the milk supply up, but I was going from pumping like five ounces down to two. It was so hard. I just couldn't keep up with it. As well, through the night was the hardest because I wasn't pumping every two hours in the night. I went to every four because they were waking me up for the eye the antibiotics and they were giving me IV paracetamol as well regularly to keep my temperature down so I was waking up for that anyway so that's when I would pump the milk. I wasn't building up enough for me to give bottles of milk to Lavelle when she was going home with him so he started giving her formula 
just while I was in hospital, I was always planning on breastfeeding again when I went back home. Anyway, they discharged me a week later on oral antibiotics and I got home, I carried on with my breastfeeding and it just wasn't satisfying her. I would feed her a whole bottle of breast milk or half hour on the breast. She would scream after that for just more milk. It's like the breast milk was a starter for her now and she needed that formula to fill her stomach. I spoke to the health visitor about that when she visited and she said it's probably because formula is higher in fat so it's a lot heavier on the stomach so she's just got used to that heavy feeling that she just wanted so I was breastfeeding her then finishing it off with formula it was just really shit it was really disheartening because I really wanted to be a breastfeeding mum I was telling myself I'd do it for my goal would be six months I did carry on after that but it got harder and harder my milk supply just never went back to what it was before I got sepsis so I only lasted three weeks breastfeeding which is a little bit rubbish but at least she was getting milk. To be honest, I did struggle with the breastfeeding as well. I don't think I had a great start with my baby, obviously from having a hospital admission for such a long time. It was just really disheartening and I struggled with it immensely. Like, I don't think people really pay for how difficult breastfeeding is. I'm also not really a very confident person with the fact that I really didn't want to get my boob out in public. I knew you can get the shawls. It was always just a bit difficult for me. It gave me anxiety. I did find it quite painful as well. I know they say if you're doing it right, the latch is right, it should not be painful, but it was. It always was a little uncomfortable. My nipples were always saw. I was always rubbing the cream on them. I really hated how big my boobs were as well when I was breastfeeding. They just filled up so much and it was just whoa like they were huge. They were three sizes bigger than what they were when I was pregnant and I got gotten bigger when I was pregnant so from what my normal size was it was just humongous. So none of my clothes fit me. I was wearing baggy t-shirts. I felt horrible. I thought I was going to go from being pregnant and start feeling great again after I'd given birth and I didn't. I felt horrible and I know it's not important. I did kind of just want to go back to feeling normal again in a way. Like that's why I'm not breastfeeding. But yeah, that's my story. I tried to speak really, really quickly because I didn't want it to be boring or drag out, but I wanted to get straight to the point. So I hope I did. But if you are still watching, then thank you so much. If you like motherhood content, please give me a subscribe. I'm going to be posting more videos. If you liked this video and thought it was informative, then please give me a like just so I know that I'm doing something right. And bye from us. You're gonna say goodbye, Nia. <laughs> You're gonna smile. No. Okay, bye guys.